Hello, and welcome back to What's Bubbling a Zim. I'm Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're going to continue to look at what's new in Zim NFT 01. So, that's right here, Zim NFT 01 at zimjs.com. And what's new in Zim NFT, making interactive NFTs with Zim is behind this arrow. And there are lots of other updates as well. We've been going into the news section here and pressing on the bubbling mini site for Zim NFT 01. So we've gone through dialog boxes. We went through emojis and indicators in the last one. And now we're going to go to the next one. Um, which I've already got open here, poop, right there, and we'll, we'll take you through those. This is CAM. Bum, ba -da -dum. So should I F11 this? I guess so. All right, so you see what's happening there is I'm here, hello, that's me, and as I go over the sensor, it, uh, it turns colors. So what we've got is if you go over it, it, it just sort of activates it, and as long as there's motion in there, it will be activated, and then it turns itself off after a short amount of time. So I didn't move there, even though my hand is still there. So anyway, that's it's detecting uh, motion in that area. So we've got two uh, cam motions, one in here and one in here. There you go, neat, huh? We may as well take you through the each of the demos. I oh by the way, there's me even more so. <laughs> Hello there, and uh, even less so. So we've got a little uh, indicator thing here. So I go to the next one here. Here's how it begins. Yes, use cam. No, we hit yes, and uh, there we go. Now we've got a little octopus. So as I twiddle my fingers, the uh, octopus um, follows my motion. Neat, huh? And uh, there we go. <laughs> uh, there's various settings we can do. So we've also provided a little widget for the cam alpha. There's the, the cam alpha. Sometimes twiddling the fingers. I tend to twiddle the fingers a little bit, make sure that it doesn't go to something else that is moved. Um, their sensitivity, this stuff is, is tricky. There's sensitivity about smoothness and precision is how many how many places it's checking for motion and damping is how quickly it's going to go there. So right now they're mostly halfway uh, there. There's also whether the camera is flipped or not. So that that would allow you to stand uh, like stand in front of a big screen. Um, facing the you know the other way and still have uh, people see the motion follow your hand and stuff like that. Usually I'm here at the computer and, and we don't I, I'm, I don't want it going the wrong way. But anyway, as, as you can see, that works. That was kind of tricky to do that. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Uh, but anyway, these other settings are here as well. Um, you can play with those. Our little collapsible panel. Okay, let's go to the next one. Use cam, yes or no. So this all worked on a PC just fine because uh, the very first time you do it, you're gonna say use cam, yes. And then you go up to the top here, the, the browser is going to say, uh, are, do you want to allow the camera? And you say yes. On the PC, that counts as interacting with the canvas. And that was great. So we launched the thing and then we tried it on an iPad. It didn't work on an iPad and we were a bit upset. It's too bad. iPad always makes things work well. I don't know what happened. And then we tried, realized we tried it on Safari just on a, a Mac and realized that the Mac doesn't count accepting the camera as interacting with the canvas. <sighs> So in other words, it's back to just like what we had with pictures and, or sorry, with video, uh, or what was it? Something we have to, yeah, microphone, video, or sound, sound, that's it. With sound, you gotta, and, and video, you've gotta interact with the canvas before that can happen. So in other words, we had to make a widget here, and this is on the canvas, so we're saying yes. And that widget is interacting with the canvas, so that the camera can show up. We don't have to do that on a PC, but we have to do it for a Mac. So in this one, what we've got are two, two sides. Look, if I'm in the middle, no motion, even though I'm moving, well, I turn myself up a bit. Even though I'm moving here, 
there's no motion. But if I, if I go like this, then I get motion on the sides. So do you see what we're doing? We're doing two motion uh, cursors. Uh, however we did it, we'll go in and take a look at the code. Um, you can either use a cam motion and get the results of the cam motion and just put these things. Now my elbow is hitting, you know? So what we try and do is in general, we're taking the top of the motion because that's usually what we want. Although I think there's a setting where you can decide on what you're going to do there. We're taking the top of the motion. And if it, if uh, this won't work here because we were you know, kind of like uh, only on the edges, but if we are have motion here in the middle, then the, the object will send, will go on that center motion. If we move over to the right, then it doesn't take the center of the motion, it takes the right of the motion. If we move over to the left, it doesn't take the center, it doesn't take the right, it takes the left of the motion. And I had developed that, uh, that's an invention, I had developed that back for Flash and Flash Feathers. I had this happening, this was going on 10 years ago, 15 years ago, <laughs> well, what was it, 2000, 2000, something like that? Yeah, it's a, it's a long time ago. Um, but anyway, uh, I always thought that we'd bring it back into the canvas, and here it is. So, isn't that cool? Yay! But anyway, that sort of technique was what I had developed before. It kind of made sense because as you're reaching this way, you want the sort of farthest motion that side, or the farthest motion this side. Here, you have no idea which side you really want. And also, the upper motion. Okay? And there's a few different settings on, on, on that. Let's go to the next one. Use the cam, yes. What is this doing? <laughs> oh dear, <laughs> I think we found out. <laughs> ah, <laughs> there we go. So this one is just putting emojis at where the motion is. <laughs> nice emojis, huh? I, I had initially just picked a couple emojis and I had a rainbow in a toilet. I thought that was lovely as well, but I didn't want people of the, the rainbow persuasion to uh, think that I was causing any problems for them, like flushing them down the toilet. So uh, not at all. Um, so I adjusted that and we have, um, yay, you win a trophy <laughs> for, for your fine flushing. <laughs> Anyway, we did an NFT. This is not the default. This is called, let's see, what do we call it? Um, um, it's the motion cam, but with the visualizer turned on that it basically allows you to put stuff at where the motion is. So we did an NFT that used the default when we were building it. The default were just these round circles and they were lovely and they looked really, really cool like bubbles and we called it air bubbles. So if you want to see where that is, but isn't that neat? So that's um, where uh, we're placing things at where the motion is. And those are the camera examples. I think that's the end of it. And then we come back out. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. We'll F11 that and drop it down and show you, oh darn, show you something in a browser. What do you know? So the Zim site, if we go to examples and take a look at NFTs here. There it is right here, air balls. Should we go look at it? Let's see if it works. Sometimes NFTs take a long time to load in. It's not it's not Zim, it's coming from the interplanet interplanetary file system. So it looks like some people have uh, purchased this NFT. That's nice. And we're waiting for it to activate. <laughs> waiting. We can come back to it actually and then it will probably be have it self-loaded. I can't remember. I think I can get cam. Oh yeah, here it is. It just came in. So once again, you know, that, that, that there's nothing to load here. There's <laughs> just nothing to load. It's just the interplanetary file system being bogged down with the world collecting NFTs. Yay. So we'll use the camera. Yes. And there are those lovely bubbles. And let's open that up full screen. Nice, huh? So this one's called air balls and there's me um, and here are the air balls, but I like it dark. Alrighty, and that's uh, that's that. But isn't that neat? It just kind of works right in there. Uh, an interactive NFT, amazing. 
No, I'd love to show you through some of my other NFTs as well. Wow. These ones are all on... <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Those ones are all in Hicket Nunk. These new ones are in FX Hash. They're lovely, especially that one. I think it might be the nicest thing I've ever made. So pop on in there if you get a chance. And let's take a look at some code, though. Now, this is a bubbling rather than an explore. So in general, uh, we're introducing the new topics in a more visual way and not going through everything in the code. The last, the last bubblings, uh, you know, were pretty easy to look at. Just uh, quick, quick examples. Um, but this one is a little bit more to look at. And what might work out well is to do a bubbling on it, where we can kind of uh, really just relax and and go through it all, spend an hour looking at the code. Okay, so I'll introduce one or two maybe of these, depending on how it goes. <laughs> okay, we'll see how it goes. Uh, here they are, Cam, Cam 2, 3, and 4. They're in, oh, yep, in the bubbling. No, those are, oh, yeah, the assets here. Sorry, I got mixed up. So those are the cams, and they're in the bubbling of NFT. So NFT bubbling, can well, we saw them. They're part of that mini site. So we're bringing in uh, slightly different here, NFT01, Zim underscore Cam. So CAM is now a new library, a new helper library. That's all out in the docs. Let's have a peek. So, well, if we click here, oh, that's not the CAM. That was this other thing. But uh, under helper right here, or indeed back up at top, sorry, just before we go there. There it is right there, CAM. So these are the, the helper libraries. Socket, game, physics, three, CAM. Just realized we didn't add that library to libraries on the code page. Uh, something we need to do. Anyway, um, if we hit helper here, it brings us back down to these guys. Here are the classes that we can use with um, that cam thing. So if we open up any one, must import the cam module. Okay, or use the crystal, uh, which is what we were doing there. And here's where you can see that example and try it out yourself. And this is the cam. The other things, the other parts here, uh, took, 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 the cam motion, cam cursor, cam alpha, cam controls, they, uh, well, these guys, these two are the main ones that we're using. They, if you don't import a cam, it will just take a, a, make a default cam for you. So that's probably fine. In other words, you just make a new cam motion and ignore the cam. Um, Right, so let's have a look. Sometimes though, if you're making more than one of them, then you wanna make a cam. This is one way to do it, make a cam and pass that cam into both of them. Both of them have the cam way here, I think, or that's got a cam there. Where's the cam in that one? That might be something to look at. Let me just write that down. So that was um, cam cursor is seemingly missing. Let's have a check here. We may have just forgotten to put the parameter up at the top. Uh, the code's probably, no oh, crap, the code's not here. It's in the actual cam thing. Uh, right, so if we go up to the top, bear with me, and hit cam, here's the cam. And we're just wanting to check on the actual parameters of cam. There's cam motion, there's the cam. So we can pass in a cam to cam motion. And here's cam cursor, and there's a cam, yeah. So we forgot to put the cam in the docs one, I think what happened is we came here and changed this and it was after we moved this over into the docs. Alrighty, so um, why don't uh, we do this officially? The official way is we go here, would it be called a bug? I guess so. Uh, go to bugs and say add cam param <laughs> to <laughs> cam cursor in docs. Okay, there we go. Live, a live bug report. All right. Closing, closing. Um, so anyway, if you if you have more than one, and in some cases we did have more than one, then one option would be to make a cam and pass the same cam into however many you have. 
The other option though is to make a cam motion to start, say, and then use the cam property of cam motion to pass into the next cam motion you make or a cam cursor that you might make after. But actually a cam cursor comes with a cam motion. So it should also have a, proper, or a parameter for receiving a cam motion. I'm not sure if it does. Maybe we didn't do that. I can't remember. Anyway, uh, this is all new. So some of this, you know, gets adjusted as we go, as we try it out. Uh, I've already built a bunch of things with it. Well, you saw a bunch of those examples. And during that building with the bunch, there was constant adjustment of, of these parameters and of, of features. We added a cam alpha widget. And then we realized we needed a cam. Uh, we thought, hey, let's make a cam controls as well. And we don't have it here. Take a look. Aren't we missing something? Do you remember it? That little widget, it's called cam ready. So yeah, the docs have not been... Uh, the latest of the docs maybe weren't moved into um, into the docs here. So I'll have to come back and check that out. We've got one more class called Cam Ready that does that questioning uh, at the beginning. Okay, so uh, we're going to peek at some code. And often the code, when we were just doing some basic examples, the code was pretty straightforward, I hope, anyway. Here's the new Cam Ask. And we've adjusted, oh yeah, that's right, that's another neat little thing. We've adjusted the window. When we show something, we realized it would be nice if on that show we could pass in a callback. And that callback function is the function that runs when we um, close the window. So that's a close callback. It's sort of a strange way to do it, but it's quite handy because otherwise you've got to make a close event, which we could have made a close event, which would be fine. But if you imagine you've got a dialog window with a yes and a no, it would be really neat to, to just be able to uh, answer that. And when it closes, it calls a callback function and it receives whether it's yes or no. And so that's exactly what we built here. It sort of shortens everything. It says, hey, make a new camera and show it. But this thing is taking the answer of that, either yes or no. So if it is yes, that's going to be true. So if yes, we're allowed to do the camera. Else, else we set up a pane saying cam was not accepted. Oh, actually, that's here, I think. Oh, that's a, no, that's a cam error. So yeah, this is the else. And if the cam, if, if we accepted, it, let's see, how did that work? Oh, if there's an error. So um, if, if there's an error, then we're going to say it's not. Anyway, so we, we've worked out this system that works pretty well. This looks like a lot of stuff. I can't even remember what this cam was doing. What, what, were, what were we doing in this one? Oh yeah, we had a couple buttons. So... Basically, since we had two buttons, we made a cam. This is uh, an optional way to do it. And we're saying when the cam is ready. So setting up a webcam. We, we've accepted the webcam. Yeah, that's great. Oh, yeah, that's it. We haven't accepted the webcam. We've made the webcam. Now we have to wait for the browser to accept. We didn't see that part because I, if I've got uh, OBS running, how I'm recording this, if OBS is running, it won't except my, um, I, I can't run the, it's just my computer, I can't run the video feed through both OB, OBS and through uh, the cam. So what I did is I started the browser first and then I'm able to start OBS and run that even though the cam's on the browser. Anyway, the we make the cam, but that still needs to wait for the person to say, I accept in the browser, I accept. And so if that happens, we get a ready. Actually, either way, we get a ready. Mm, I think that's it. And this is the error. If we don't get it, I can't remember exactly how that worked. But anyway, yeah, the cam was not accepted. Um, so if the user does not accept the browser, so if the user doesn't accept it in the browser, we're going to get that. Right. Well, what is all this stuff then? Oh, that's if it's ready. Yeah. So if it's ready, I'll collapse this for us. If it's ready, we do this stuff. If there's an error, you see it, that's not inside the same brackets. If there's an error, then we get that stuff. The ending brackets inside of that closed thing there. So we make... We do a cam ask, 
we make the cam. So if they say yes to the cam ask, we make the cam. We wait for the user to respond. If the user responds, we get a ready. If we get an error, we get an error. Okay, there we go. So we're in here now. We're styling what those buttons are going to look like and we're making a, there's the button. We make a new cam motion and we pass in the button. So what a cam motion does is it collects um, it collects the motion in a certain region. If you don't put anything in, then it assumes the whole stage. If you put a rectangle in there, then it will capture over a rectangle. It doesn't have to be a button, for instance. So I suspect it's a rectangle. It's the bounds of it. So it's using the bounds. If you put a triangle in there, it's probably going to capture the motion on the square bounds of the triangle. Yes, I think so. I don't I think you're stuck with a square, basically. There might be other ways to avoid that, but it might take some computation. But anyway, we passed in a button, and we also told it the cam. So there's the one rectangle. Cam motion one dot on active. Uh, that's when there's motion. Active is when there's motion. Activate. So here's activate. We took the function out because I think we're activating with both of them. So here's the second button. There's the cam motion, a new cam motion. We said, hey, go on the second button. We're using the same cam. And then we say, when it activates, call activate. Or when it's active, call activate. That's great. This is the cam alpha. So we pass in the cam for that. And that allows us to set the, the alpha. It's a little widget right there. That's it, and then the error. So it looked like a lot. This is all the header stuff that we do on all of those pages, nothing to do with the cam. So it looked like a lot initially when I came in here, but <laughs> you know that wasn't that bad, was it? Cam motion on that button, cam motion on this button. Oh, what does activate do? And activate is just set changing the background color of the button to red, and after a certain amount of time, uh, setting it back to um, alpha out white. This thing is just making sure that as we continue to make motion on it, it's going to say active, 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 active. Think of it as a, think of it as a, a ticker or something. You know how sometimes you do a hit test inside a ticker and it goes constantly. Same thing's going to happen here. It's going to active, 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 or it's like a press move, active, active, active. So what we're saying is, if there is a timeout already made, clear the timeout. So what that does is the very last active. Finally, this timeout is left going after half a second, and it turns the color off. Anyway, you can examine that. Nothing really to do with the cam, just um, just some JavaScript. Okay, etc. I I think that we get the idea. Maybe just take a look at the second cam. Each one features a certain thing. This is doing the same ask process, and we hardly have anything in the middle. So that that was the end of it. We didn't put the um, we didn't put the warning panes in here though. So only the first one has these, as far as I can remember, only the first one has the sort of error pane system. Then I'm just saying, hey, ask if yes, then we've got a cam cursor. So this is a new cam cursor with an emoji. That's the octopus emoji. And note that we, um, Oh, the controls are going in there in the alpha. Okay, so we've got the alpha and the controls. So I, I thought for a minute it was something else, but th that's it. We didn't even pass in a cam. We didn't make a cam. The cam cursor, if we don't, if it doesn't have a cam already, then uh, it will make a cam for us. So if we want a cursor to follow the camera, new cam cursor, and by the default it will be a round circle. You wouldn't even need that. And that's it. These two things aren't even part of it. They're just saying, um, set the alpha of the camera, if you want, and set the controls to sort of f f fiddle with how that cursor follows. <laughs> okay, so that's it. So there it is. One line of code. If you didn't pass in the emoji, which looks complicated, that would be it right there. You don't even need... No, did I do? You don't even need this if, if you're not doing anything else. New camp cursor. Bop. Like that. And you've got a, a cursor following the the camera 
theory. You don't even have to have whether it's yes or no. You can just say, hey, ask, and that's what you do. Okay, so that's great. That was that one. So we'll let uh, we'll look through more um, later in a uh, you know at a later date. This, we've already had had you here for almost half an hour. So hopefully you you like what you see here. Ooh, maybe just in cam four, what do we do? Uh, here's the cam motion right here. So we're using a cam motion. This is the one where all those circles or whatever f f followed your thing. That's a preview alpha. By default, it is 0.2. This is a, preci a precision setting. And a randomized false. I'm not even sure why we... Oh, randomize. Shoot, I, sh I was must have just been testing that. I probably actually want the randomized true on to make that. Oh, no, I don't. because Ah, right. This is the one that looked like a grid. It was like a grid of things. Basically, what, what is happening is we're making a grid of little sensor points. And the precision is how uh, precise it is. So this is zero precision. It's out maxed. It's not precise at all. That's because those emojis are really big. So in other words, on this one, which put the toilets and the, what was the other thing, the trophies, uh, we went with a very loose grid, you know, uh, because there's those toilets and, and trophies were pretty big. And we're just capturing motion at that location, basically. And we said, don't randomize. Randomize, what randomize is doing is instead of making it a grid, it starts off with a grid, but then it shifts each grid point a little random bit. And what that does is it makes it sort of less boxy as the motion's going. It's just, it's more a little organic looking. In the end, we worked on this thing called smoothness. What we do is we don't believe each record. We don't believe each, uh, each interval, like interval. The interval is how often we check and it's, it's a parameter that we can set as well. And instead of moving the motion to each one, we take uh, we take like eight or 10 or however smooth uh, we, we go to, but we take a certain number of readings and average them. And we're constantly averaging the last eight readings. And all of a sudden, instead of bumpy along that grid, it became smooth. And it was like, oh, yay. Because before we did the smoothness, it was sort of, you could tell that it was moving along a grid. So we randomized it, and then it just kind of looked a little bit bumpy. Not, not as much along the grid, but a bit bumpy. And then when we added smooth, which we've just cranked up to one, like one is maximum smoothness looks the best. We just cranked it up and said, okay, there you go. That looks smooth. And we're, we're, we're quite happy about it. So uh, that's nice. And all this, by the way, is coming from... Uh, coming from my head. I, I, I built this before in Flash. A lot of this stuff, what we're doing here is we're just checking to see if the color has changed in these locations. We used to have, we used to use the difference filter back in Flash and there was a, they had a, 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 a method called put rect around color. <laughs> and, and we blurred things out and we applied all these other things. Anyway, we came in here and all I'm doing is comparing two pixel colors within a certain range. And if those pixel colors are the same, there's no motion. And the range is how uh, sensitive it is. So uh, if, if you say those colors have to be exact, that's really sensitive. Oh no, it's not sensitive at all. Then it hardly captures motion because uh, I can't, which way, I can't remember which way it goes. But if you say it can be just, uh, you know, uh, shades of, of, of change of color, then that would that would pick up motion more. That would be more sensitive. So uh, often cameras just have, you know, they, they're a little grainy sometimes, and that grain will all of a sudden start picking up motion. Uh, but if you really lock down on how precise that color has to be, then you get less of that. So that's in those controls. And probably something that we would want to talk about more in an explorer. <laughs> right. So let's get out of here. Although, you know, it's just all so exciting, isn't it? I am Dr. Abstract, and this has been a What's Bubbling at Zim Bureau. And we're happy to announce the new CAM module, uh, CAM helper library for Zim in Zim NFT1. By the way, this CAM module, because we had done it in Flash years and years and years ago, this CAM module has been 
um, planned since Zim 1. So in Zim 1, we were going, hey, in Zim 2, let's put the cam module in. <laughs> and then Zim just became so, uh, it just grew so quickly. We kept on adding and adding and adding. If you look back through the updates, we've just been adding and adding and adding and just never quite had time to get to that cam module until now. Also, we thought it might be really tricky and it was pretty tricky but um, surprised at how quickly and well this went together. We, we built this in about a week, so that's super. Glad to have you here. Please come and visit us at zimjs.com slash slack or zimjs.com slash discord. If you're still here listening to this, you gotta come and be part of our community. We'd love to see you there. Everybody's welcome. Bye-bye.